Sposiso liope. So wanna put. Unjan fez. Oh, says I shoot. We hitting. Oh, we rolling. No, we can go. So intimidated when you came in here, Kogi suit. Kawanga many Kogele shorts and. Uh, Is it? Oh, partner. Yeah, no, I'm, I was I was doing some work today. Sure. So I was I was I was in the office. Sure. Um, I did think about it. Good. Ish. Your shame changes. Things over late. No, but I'm I'm happy you didn't. People need to see the different uh, sides of you. And I think some people have missed this side, of course, when you look at social media. I just so so horrible. <laughs> so I invited you today. You and I have had a million conversations in the virtual cool cool on the hustlers corner. Um, I wanted us to speak about business. Okay. I wanted us to speak about the future of online and the internet. I normally do conversations, but because you and I speak so much, uh, I'm I want to do an interview today, and I'd I'd like you to to rock. If you don't mind, just stop me at any time. Yeah. I want to go through a list of some of the things that we know you for. If there's something that I'm getting wrong, you let me know. Okay, I think the first thing I must do it's this Patrice Lumumba. I'm supposed to have given it to you, I think, a few months ago. Cheers. Yeah, this one is from Uput Velimbele. This is a gift. Um, yes, you remember? I think I don't know which book that you got, and then uh, I took this one. Sure. And then I said, as soon as I'm done with this one, I'll come um, bring it back to you. Have you read it? Yeah, I've Jeez, read no, I'm looking forward to it. Patrice Lumumba. Patrice very... Lumumba. George S. Nzongola Ntalaja. No, I look forward to reading it. Thank you very much, Buddha. And thanks to Velim Pele as well. Yeah, the I still haven't met up with him, but I'm, I'm hoping we can have a conversation. Yeah, Mr. Mutapa, he, he's definitely coming back and we'll have a, a beautiful conversation. Sure. TS Records, Ekas Noble Properties, More Fire Beverages. You're currently pushing NFTs, non fungible tokens. You're pushing the crypto university with Great Jabesi, Homegrown Radio and the Homegrown Farm, Leadership 2020. You've written three books. Setting up Massive Metro. In your own right, you're a musician. You've had performances as DJ Spoo. And then you've set up a charity foundation, SLEF, the Sposiso Liope Education Foundation. And currently you have the Hustlers Corner YouTube channel, which is hopefully going to branch into, into the virtual Mkuku. And back in the day, you were involved with Tumzegezege with his overalls and the starter packs on Vodacom. And then you had Vandal t-shirts. Jeez, is there anything I've forgotten? Because already this is a crazy list. <laughs> uh, geez, one has done quite a lot and it's, it's humbling to, you know, to, to hear you mention them. There's obviously a lot, but I hold the world record. I, <laughs> I've, In what? For people that have never heard? I've, 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 I hold, we, we hold... I think it's very selfish of me to say I. Sure. It's myself and a team of young people that were joining Homegrown Radio at the time, an internet radio station. Check it out, homegrownradio.co.za. They were new at the time. During COVID-19, we ran uh, some um, online radio courses. We had a course called I Was Born to Speak on Radio. And the graduates from that course we decided to bring them on board and we started a radio station at our farm in Centurion. And they were part of me um, sort of getting out of radio. I retired. Uh, I did my last Massive Metro show for the last time. Not a lot of people were on the internet on, on my last four years of radio. Yeah. I think it was just pre-COVID. And we're building Massive Metro for times like these where like the South African masses are online. Sure. But I think we were too ahead of our time. I remember with Gareth Cliff with Tibor Touch. But that was a quite a, an incredible experience. Yeah, just to mention that, and we did a the longest music radio show in the world. Crazy. Yeah, we started it on the 16th, the 15th of December, just before the 16th. Mm. And then we went all the way to the 20-something. I think we went for nine days. So, Non-stop. Yeah, you can Google that Jeez. world record, yeah. Congrats. <laughs> it's humbling, it's humbling. Ooh, ooh, yeah. ooh, Black Coffee still got the record for DJing. I don't know yeah. if you're aware. Black Coffee has got the, the, the record for the... Um, for DJing, sure, literally playing alone by himself for the longest time. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I know Mango Sutuptelis, Mkulu, I believe Mkulu Mango Sutuptelis of the IFP, also has a world record for the longest speech ever delivered. I just don't know how <laughs> long it was, but it was it was quite an interesting experience. So yeah, I think those one will drop them in. Yeah. Because I'm assuming maybe this video lends into uh, a different audience. People are seeing it for the first time. Yeah. Sometimes I just never mention these accolades. But now that you're mentioning them, let me just add on. Why not? No, thank you. Which of these do you think stands out for you the most out of all of these? I mean, property, 
obviously everyone knows you for Immortal Fire today. Um, is there one you have a soft spot for? Is there one you wish you could maybe go back to? Because I know TS Records, for example, no longer exists. Um, I would like to think TS Records is the entire industry now. Okay. You know, it might not exist on paper mm. and we might not be there to run the record label. Mm. Uh, I think we, we had a, a great career with my business partner. We made history in this country. I think we contributed to a lot of young people's lives. We inspired a lot of people. We're very independent and we're very vocal about it. Those yeah. days, it was premature. Um, we pr would preach th the language of people owning their own masters, starting their own publishing companies so that all of the time they get to collect all these different types of royalties their publishing companies collect on their behalf. We, we, we were very loud about that language. We, we, we worked with a lot of incredible young people whom um, till today I can only imagine if Brown was still around. You Shout know. out to Brown Dash. May so rest in peace. He was a, a one of the you know people who contributed in the success of TS Records. And, you know, shout outs to uh, Gilima Jaivan and Meso Rest in Peace mm. and Robbie Malinga as well, yeah. who was an amazing producer. And then a whole lot of other people that we went on to work with. So we did Guaido music. We had a lot of success there. We had a lot of multi-platinum gold albums. Um, we did Afro pop, Afro soul or whatever you want to call it. We did really well with Ntlantla as a solo artist on TS Records. Um, you guys would know her from Mafigi Zolo. Yeah. She had some platinum um, albums uh, together. We, we did some great work. I wrote some songs on a lot of quite albums that we did. Nabo Brown, Nabo Izinyoga, Nabo Mzege Zege. I executive produced all the projects. We released the TS Records. We're blessed to also Jeez. work with uh, um, Linda Mkiz, a pro. Yeah. May so rest in peace. The greatest yeah. South African lyricist of all time. I, and, I can't fight that. Um and yeah, it was just us still continuing with the journey of contributing in the culture. You, you can express yourself in different genres mm -hmm. or you can express yourself in different ways, like writing books, creating product, creating TV shows or podcasts or radio shows. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just all a form of expression. And, you know, we title these things, we call them, this is that, this is that, and this, you need that skill to communicate through it. And, and But I kind of feel it's all one. It all comes from, you know, s the same person with this with yeah. the it come it comes from the same source yeah and yeah so i've had a, i've had a great music career and my own albums i've had about seven albums my eighth album i dropped it COVID 19 happened couldn't promote it sorry i think it was one of the least known albums from me but it's beautiful i love those types of bodies of work mm. because other people get to discover them later sure. um when when they go down your your catalog of music that you, music that you've made I've won multiple awards on, in the music industry. I've, I've written songs. I've co-produced with people. I've, 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 in, I've not necessarily engineered music, but produced music. Mm. I was a diff different type of a producer. I've got a very good ear for, for good talent and for good music. If you go back to all of my house albums, you would tell. My first album, I mean, I worked with uh, my other brother. I'm sure my 2000 among and I'm a rest in peace, Anga. <laughs> <laughs> rest in peace, Iggy Smalls. Shame, man. Iggy Smalls, when you look at what Black Coffee became and who Black Coffee is, mm. I wouldn't say he was similar to Black Coffee and rest in peace to DJ Monde. But the, the type of ear they had for music, for, for clean, beautiful, good music, was the only other person I could make an example of now is Coffee. Yeah. that had that type of ear for music and that type of talent. Yeah. So my first album, I did it with Monde and Iggy Smalls. But back in those days, we used to just compile house songs from overseas, put them together onto an album sure. and, and sell them. The album was called House Tunes. It had some beautiful hits. Some people didn't even know the, the were my songs, you know, it was uh, uh, songs from my album because I didn't promote DJ Smooth that much at that time. Mm. And also I was not on TV at the time. I was still like on my come up, you know. But an album that went on to then open up big, bigger doors for me and make me a household name, for lack of a better word, in South Africa would be Wildlands Volume 1. Sure. That would be my second album. So a lot of people think my second album was actually my first album. But it was... I, I, it was I can my, hear that. Yeah, but it was my second album. Um, opened up a lot of doors for me. Singles like Abu um, For A Reason, Abu Everybody Wants Love, Abo, remember when it rained? We ha we had a lot of hits on that album. It went on to become a classic. People are still talking about it till today. And um, at that time, I knew that it would be a classic because a lot of sisters loved it. Sure. 
Yeah, and I was just always that guy who was focusing on the ladies' market. So really? I looked good for the ladies. I, I spoke to the ladies. That, uh, that was an uh, intentional thing? Because um, I'm just thinking, yeah. my club obviously have all, all ladies' ladies' nights which bring the gents in. I would have never thought that you were making music with ladies in mind, especially because all of us love the music you've released. Yeah, I think the blessing that I had was TK having TK as an older brother. Yeah. TK is now in politics. He's got a very successful career. He's very humble mm. and he always loves um, serving, you know. But in politics, you know, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crazy game. Yeah. He's in it and he's built for it. And I believe he's got all that it takes to make a difference and serve his country. Sure. And that's what he's passionate about. Do you think he's going to go all the way? Or is he I think to so. Go all the way? I think so. I mean, I've, the country. ever since I've known him, he's always been very ambitious. Yeah. He's always been very conscious. So the consciousness in me um, was planted by him mostly okay. back in those days. So even when we were building the, D the DJ Spoo was built as a brand. You need to remember there was a time Greg Maluka sat with me in Dambama at YFM and said, you've been um, producing for other people, doing jingles and ads for the station. You've been behind the scenes doing graveyard slots and sitting in on other people's slots. Mm. I think now it's time for you to shine. I'm going to give you the afternoon drive show. Jeez, this is beautiful. This is at YFM at that time. Yeah. And you're young. I'm in my early 20s. Um, but at the time, also, I guess he felt the pressure. I was on friends like these, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, there's friends like these. <laughs> but he was Pr a smart... Prime time television. Yeah, and I think as a somebody who's sitting on radio, putting together a smart, good radio show for your mm. ace players, you know that you've got an ace player that you've been molding. But I need to remember, Greg built me from when I was an up-and-coming, when I was a nobody. Mm. He put me on, and I got that talent search competition. I went in, I went on to the graveyard slot. Mm. I was doing the 2 to 6 a.m. slot in Jalo for, for more than a year to yeah. two years. And then he started when whoever is not around starting to introduce my voice into the market because my voice was very distinct, right? Very distinct. Oh, Even to this day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, because no, I know it's, it's a podcast. You know, as Jahang. We both know this. We both know this. I, and I'm also giving you value because yeah. a lot of the things I'm going to speak about here, I don't speak about anywhere else. So I'm Thank just you. adding value to, to, Thank you. to, to the content that we're creating for your podcast because I know it's, it's going to be one of the it's it's the latest interview. I mean, it's it's going to be one of the the dopest interviews I've sure. ever done. You know, and and um, we sat and we brainstormed the. And sorry, when I say there was pressure that he could put me on the drive time slot, it wasn't from an arrogant place. Yeah. I was basically saying he was sharp. He was smart. Yeah. He knew that I had a prime time TV show. Yeah. I was young, yeah. cool. I was happening. I had a hit album, hit music. I was, you know, TS Records. Yeah. And he's like, no, he has to get a drive time show here. And you need to remember, I'm not one of the guys that moved from TV to radio. No, I'm like from hardcore radio. Yeah. And from radio, I was also trained from the school of YFM of, of being yourself. On YFM, you need to remember, you had like Abzela. May yes. so rest in peace. You spoke, it was the dad. You, you, you had uh, DJ Fresh, <laughs> you know, who came from Bozana, my man. No love for house music and mixing. You had about Iggy Smalls behind the scenes who were good with that sound, how YFM sounded on air. Yeah. Um, you had about Root Boy Paul doing about Rap Activity Jam, about Oskido contributing in the hip hop culture. You had about Semi T who spoke English so well, bro. <laughs> you had about Fed Joe. It's like you had an ace team, bro. You guys are the YFM the mafia. A -team. We, we speak about the Stellenbosch mafia, the PayPal mafia. You guys became the YFM mafia and you went on to affect culture across the entire country, if not the continent and arguably parts of the world. Yeah, that's what happened. And we're very, we're, we, I remember a lot of people used to say, YFM is a Gauteng station. When is it coming to other provinces? Yeah. I was saying to Greg yesterday, th there's a project we busy with. I was saying to him, um, YFM has gone global, bro. Look at us now. We, we, you are very gray. I'm starting to get gray. <laughs> How do you feel about it, Greg? Yeah. Greg was like, yo, my man, he's got that velvety voice, you know? Sure. And you know? Sure. The work that we did at YFM and what we went on to do at Kaya FM, because you need to remember the, the audience we were serving at YFM had grown. Now yes. it became a Kaya FM audience. That's beautiful. I'd like to say I've had the best jobs in the world because I've had to go to Kaya now. Mm. For me, I treated Kaya like it was YFM because I was 
uh, a part of the audience. I was mm. living it. I was no longer that young person whom we're throwing up, we're throwing parties. I was now a family man, a businessman, and I grew with my audience. That's why it was easier for me to do my job at Kai, and that's why we performed. We did a great job, and and big up to them for that Afri Afri. I think it was what Afro, Africanicity. I don't know. Uh, Af I know the Afropolitan. I don't know if this their magazine. No, no, no. Uh, but I don't know what their tagline was. Yeah, I think their concept and where the station, sure, the direction of the station went to. Yeah, so they did a great job, and um, I'm glad that I was a part of history. So you, I can go on and on. My career has been very long. <laughs> you, you speak very fondly of Greg and, and other people speak very fondly of him. And you, you speak about his, number one, ability to identify talent, young talent. Number two, the fact that he was willing to fight for you and give you a leg up. And it seems like his spirit has lived in through you because you seem to be doing similar work. I mean, speak about TS, we can speak up until this day and include myself as an example. The number of young people you've put on at a time when you were young as well, I mean, we speak about a robot boy today, but back in the day, obviously, O Pro Kid, O Lungelo, O Brown Dash, O Mzegezege, O Zahara. Uh, would you say that's the spirit of Greg? Do you think maybe it's something you've had inside you and that's why it was so easy for you to work with Greg? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mo Fire. <laughs> <laughs> this is why they fired you. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, it's interesting that you say Mzaga Zaga. You know, people are yeah. like, like Mzaga Zaga was was great. You guys did a great job with Mzaga Zaga. Tears mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody else was great, but like you guys started out with Mzaga Zaga. Like, when is he coming back? When is he coming back? You know. And that person is probably like holding a can of more fire. Yeah. Jeez. If you don't get it, forget about it. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. But anyways, you know, um, when I, when I, when I, when I pay you help, I mean, I think it was the spirit of what I experienced at YFM is, is, is I had never experienced, I, I actually, even after that, never experienced it anywhere else. Yeah. It's a spirit I tried, I, it's a spirit I, we actually as a team created at Massive Metro. Yeah. I think, and the people who were working there at the time, will, will, I, we knew what at that time they will not know. Even now, it's still too soon for them to actually appreciate the experience that we created yeah. at, um, at Massive Metro. I sort of duplicated the experience that I had at YFM where we were just given a canvas and a painting brush. Everybody had their own paint. And we were just told to, as long as we don't paint that door in the windows, we must just go crazy. That's sure. what we were told. That's what we were taught at YFM. That's what I experienced. I experienced Fresh do that, make magic in front of my eyes. I experienced Fred, Fred Joe have a live and dangerous TV show, come back in the morning without even having slept, straight to the studio doing the um, Fred Joe live morning radio show at YFM. I experienced um, Bad Boy T, Thomas Msenga. I experienced um, greatness, you know, the greats doing their thing. And I moved on to Bama, Metro, to Ukozi. So all of the experience that I've had, I can tell you that the best one, I guess also it was the years of my youth, mm -hmm. is the experiences that I've had with YFM. And I think I'm glad that I took that journey, like from, from community radio, Voice of Tembisa, um, campus radio or University of Johannesburg at the time it was called Channel T to, to YFM mm. you know from so I did campus I did both I'm one of the few people who've done all forms of radio in South Africa sure. now I'm even podcasting I can believe that that's <laughs> crazy so campus radio community radio regional radio commercial radio PBS radio which is of course I did their morning breakfast show um, all the way to Metro FM and starting my own stations, online radio, two of them, and holding a world record and moving on to starting a podcast. Yeah. So I think I've had the full circle of the entire industry. So what I experienced then at YFM is what I tried to duplicate at Massive Metro. Mm. That was the spirit. It was before time. It was a business that could have done even better then if it was now. But I'm glad that we're one of the people that had to pay the, pay the school fees yeah. together and about Trans Africa Radio, about this. This is online radio. Yeah, sure. Opposite Massive Metro Yard, there is a radio station called Trans Africa Radio. Yeah. 
That's probably the first online radio station in South Africa. That's that's what I've heard in the rumors. Yeah, Trans yeah. Africa has been at it way before Touch, myself and Gareth came. Yeah. They've been at it from back, back in the day. And actually the owner of that station is a sister who um, who started at YFM back in the day. Sis Busintuli. She is the YFM mafia. Why do you call them the YFM mafia? <laughs> Uh, obviously mafia is a bad term but if you look at what Elon Musk, Reid Hoffman, Peter Thiel have done since their PayPal days they've built billion dollar companies LinkedIn um I'm not sure if Peter Thiel's investment company but he was the first major investor in Facebook what Elon Musk has did and this done there's a couple of other guys as well they call the PayPal mafia if you look at what the Afrikaans guys have done in Stellenbosch obviously they link ShopRite they li- they linked Capitec PSG Curo etc so it seems like uh, obviously outside of the negative aspects of the mafia term you guys had a, a, a group of people that went on to to shift culture and you're trying to create something similar at massive where hopefully in time to come kids are going to be saying yo Manus Buddha put us on and we were there and they'll be mentioning the names of the time and look at where he is now and look at what she's doing now and i believe that's what you're trying to do yeah even with the podcast you know The podcast um just before one started focusing on the podcast this year when the year started mm. what made me go focus on the podcast was the um we had a really good beautiful project with myself Timo Touch uh, my brother Robert Marau and DJ Fre- Fresh yeah excuse me we were partnering with a multi uh, not multinational but a South African listed company mm. including Celsi as well they were coming on board for Fired FM and a lot of people wanted it the whole country was like we were trending like wow they were calling us what like the working the expendables or something it is it is easy for all that type of thing um as a joke but I, i was excited about the project you know we were so close to getting that project off the ground it didn't happen mm. but i kind of felt um it was for a reason we are all grown gentlemen in our own right and we are amazing people we've all built very successful solo careers on our on our own we tried to come together to put something just when it was about to take off and it was a really good deal that we had we had a yeah. beautiful concept it didn't take off it didn't happen i wondered like something so beautiful yeah. and it was paying us a lot of money up front all, all of us and it was getting good support from a big listed company uh it, it already had pre approved advertising we we're going to go crazy with that project i was so excited and towards the end of 2021 you know yeah So when Fire FM didn't happen, um Touch went back to Metro. I decided to go dig deeper even in into my pockets that were empty. My pockets were empty through COVID throughout. I, I mean, I've, it's been it's been tough. P- part And, of why it's been tough is because you building more fire. Because the assumption is that out, but in your way more fire, it's because you've been reinvesting in the business. Yeah, I mean, it's um I'm a different type of a of a wealthy person. You know, so when I, you say your pockets were empty, it's not because you didn't have businesses that were being built. I, I think I learned from a lot of wealthy people that okay. when money comes, it doesn't stay. It, money must go into assets. Okay. So a lot of the times, these people that you hail as having money, they don't have money. Yes. Yes, they're worth a lot of money, right? But they don't have cash. But they don't around. have cash lying around. I don't want to have cash lying around. Once I've got cash, I'd rather throw it into the next property. Sorry. Why, I, why I, I've got I disturbed you. Sorry yeah. I'm, was, I'm was, veering off. No, I disturbed you. I'm sorry. I was going to you on speak about how you ended up going into podcast because fire oh, yeah. didn't happen. Didn't And happen. I want to ask if you know why it didn't happen. Um I think some things were discussed privately and quietly and okay. for the respect of the parties that were involved it's people that I think we've got potential future collaboration projects together. And I wouldn't want to jeopardize that by saying certain things and 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 you know how the social media world is they might just take a clip and it just takes a different direction but and I have to ask the question do you, do you think there was potential sabotage from mainstream no okay there was no sabotage there was just great opportunity on the table and we're all excited everybody wanted to do the deal and I just want to say to you and then when I say the, the listed company Celsi yeah. their partners us all of us, everybody was on the table like okay. everyone on, wanted to do the deal okay. i just can't go into words on why it didn't happen but because of what i've learned since ngimdala kanje sometimes khona zinye izinto nangamela ngazenzeke noma no matter how good they may look and you yeah. want them to happen your way and they don't i kind of feel then god but in um delay 
is sure. never denial. Yeah. And 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 I don't want to say rejection is direction because there was no rejection there. Sure. With all of the parties that were there, it's just I blame all of us that we didn't make that deal happen because sure. we could be making history now. Yeah. But I guess Unkulunkulu at that time had a different plan. Had a different plan, and that's why I decided to go focus on the podcast. But I'm slowly starting to see as the post the podcast grows and as the the South African market is becoming bigger and bigger on the internet. Mm. I'm starting to see maybe unkulu unkulu be afuna velo kuti ngiyo ali podcast yami. Before kuri mama podcast, I interrupted you when you were saying you already broke, but you had to dig deeper in your pocket. And maybe let me dwell on that one because we said we'll also speak about business. Yeah. Um. A, a lot of rich people that you guys know that you look up to. Sometimes you ask yourself like, why do they drive? They don't drive Porsches and they don't drive Mercs. And you know who develop they're, they're successful, right? Um, they don't have a lot of cash lying around. A lot of wealthy people invest their cash. They don't have like 10 million lying around or like 2 million in the bank account. A lot of them, they don't. A lot of them give themselves like salaries and maybe they sit on boards so they can get extra income or maybe um, depending on the nature of businesses that they're involved in, um, they'll get some money or some dividends whenever they can. But those who've been in business for a while, yeah, those ones, uh, sometimes they can choose to be liquid, you sure. know, um, it's, it's basically totally up to a person. But we all know what's going on with the money every year. Mm. And I was even saying to, I came in an Uber here, I was saying to the Uber driver, before COVID, 2019, showcase man, you say 6.5 or 17. Inflation. Yeah, so when you look at um, uh, a, a lot of these successful people, they, they're good at investing. I remember when Black Coffee invested in Yoko. I remember when Yoko started. I remember when we were all going to seminars and conferences, promoting our businesses as up and coming small businesses with the Yoko guys, with Abo Skinnisbu, I think he came in just a little few years later, and Abo Theo Patu. But the, those earlier, earlier guys, even the guys, the third guys, the hook up dinner. Hook up dinner, yeah. You know, those guys and just a whole group of us that were starting these companies and Sirlis, Kaspapa, you know? Um, to see now what these companies are becoming, Joe. Like sometimes, you know, it, it gets so surreal. I've been screaming about where we want to go with more fire. Now it's eight years in and I'm seeing what it's becoming. Sometimes it gets, maybe scary is not the right word, overwhelming. Sure. To, to actually watch your dream become come to fruition. Sure. It's a beautiful thing. But when it comes to finances, I would like to say what I've learned from the past. Sure. Yeah. Mina, you've, you've had the Porsches. Yeah, no. Mina, remember that. Mina ngwile autiam. Sure. And ngwile. And ngwile. ngwile. Ngwile, um, and I've got myself to blame, nobody else. Mm. Yeah, Ngwile, I'd, I'd like to learn about that. What do you mean, wow? Wow, from what? And um, how did you pick yourself from up? From those Porsches and just that lifestyle. Huh. I've lived the lifestyle, man. I've, I've lived, I've, I've traveled, I've driven all these great cars, these sports cars. I've lived the nicest life, the celebrity life, mm. being with other celebrities, partying and throwing parties and just being everywhere, you know? Sure. And I think as you grow older, you know better, you do better on all aspects. Were you overspending? On all aspects of your life. Yeah, I was overspending. I had, um, when I say the life, I'm trying mm. to make it simple for people to understand. So sure. the life means you're always crowded with people. You've got an entourage of people. You've got a bodyguard at times, although not all the time, but mm. I chose in the one eighty living look vane bodyguard, una ma chance. Sometimes going out, I'm the one that always covers the bill. You know, mm. you don't care. Just that type of lifestyle. You're not aware when I would say, hey, who put money in Samostad? Sure. We're spending your pay and the. Morik. Yeah, Morik. So sure. I lived that life and I was proud about it. I was young. But now I look back and I realize that I was dumb. Mm. How did you pull yourself out? Um, uncle, uncle, uncle. I mean, I, 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 I had to be honest with myself. You know, in Osea, I na 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 I think one of the smartest things that one did was. Um, investing in, in, in the in the business of Mofire mm. and investing in all the other ventures that one had to um, go and, and pursue. Some succeeded, a lot of them failed. A lot of them failed actually, mm. you know, but they say you only need to be right once. Yeah. You know, and um, I'm starting to see that happen slowly, but the all the failures that I've had have been great lessons for me to become the person that I'm becoming now. And and mm. um, I'm going to know you because um, I'm going to know you by choice. Mm. 
Yeah. We saw this with Elon Musk, uh, richest man in the world, had to go and take out a loan to buy Twitter. And everyone's like, hey, bro, can don't you I knew? And it's like, no, he doesn't even earn a salary. Um, I think he lives on a credit card. I'm still trying to find out from you, what do you think outside of overspending caused the, the you go to way? Overspending, is it because you ha- had no assets? Maybe TS records are not there anymore. And then Vuga was Vuga with you know what? I've seen that I've been living long and it's now time to start building the assets. And you started building them, and that's how you came back. I think one of the mistakes that we do is when when you when you or let me say when your income improves, yeah, you increase your expenditure, or let me say you better your lifestyle. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with you moving into a, a better spot, you know, you know, increasing or, or improving the standard of your living. Yeah. But because, you know, when you're in the entertainment industry, you fall into the trap of we watch by a lot of people. So sometimes you have to play the game and look like you've got a lot of money. Yeah. You have to look rich. Yeah. You know, so I looked richer than I was I actually was. Sure. Although I was rich for that age, but I looked richer than I was. Sure. You know, because also you need to remember the same audience that you are selling to is the same audience that's watching these overseas guys mm. that are selling to the whole world that have yeah. got millions of dollars. You can't, you can't match those guys. Sure. Just but, on currency alone. Alone, bro, yeah. you know? But then again, look at it from, from this angle as well. As much as we look great, a lot of the things that we wear are free. Yeah. <laughs> you know? People, people don't know that. Yeah, so I get into places, Mahala, you know, drinks, the, you know, people serve, I'm not drinks, Mahala, I'm not I'm just talking about your own personal life. So your own personal life, once you're out of the space where you're booked or you're invited to places, mm. Because you're young, you're bound to go out that weekend. Sure. And I'm a DJ. So even if because I look groove, I come from the school of Pelatinas, I look groove and from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's cool. It's Pumuda on a Tuesday. That's that's what it was like. Sorry, that's what it was like. You could let me see. You could, sure. Yeah, so I come from that. So even if you're not a DJ or even if you're not a famous person. When you go out almost every weekend, you're bound to overspend. Yeah. You know, you're bound to sort of um no matter to discipline Ganjan. Sure. The you, fact that you are poor mentally means yes. you is a poor. So the older you become, you're more of a family person, when you go out, it's for it's for reasons, or you have to be paid, or it has to be something that is I'm coming to Penyon's podcast. Sure. <laughs> you know? Sure. Um it's for a reason, no poor mentally. Sure. In a corner, it's not a reason you're keeping mad. Mm. It's most probably a reason why it's a meeting or it's a potential step towards bringing more money into the house. Why don't you have a car? I want us to get to the podcast, but I'm trying to keep you away from them because I want us to speak online a bit later. Why don't you have a car anymore? Um, Besides the motors, the span, Bonili Parky that you, that you got recently, but I know it was for work. Yes, it was for the business. Yeah. I, I use my company cars a lot, but I'm not car by choice. I always say to people I've been building, you know, mm. I'm still building. What, what does that mean to a normal kid? I remember Aliko Dangote, the, the wealthiest man in Africa, the wealthiest black man on the continent, saying that, you know, it's taken me 30 to 40 years to build Dangote, the empire. And he's like, it's, it's not for everyone, this thing. And you're talking about building and people are like, yeah, but Mofa is eight years old. What does that mean? And you're like, I'm building. But it's like, Ali Khurtman is not really telling us a real story. What is building? What does that mean to you? Um, I'm building. I'm building. I'm building the future. Mm. You know, I'm building the future. And I don't want um, young hustlers to get the message wrong. You need a car. You need to be mobile. Because you are able to move from point A to point B. You are able to close deals. Sure. And other people might say a car is, you know, is a liability. But to a lot of hustlers, a car is an asset. Yeah. Because it brings money home. Sure. And also, depending on the type of industry you're in or the type of hustle that you do, sometimes you probably might, you're forced to dress a certain way. Mm. And somehow you have to maybe spend a little bit more so you look a certain type of way. Sure. Because you're a hustler, you're out there meeting other business people or selling yourself or trying to get opportunities. So, uh, you know, um, perception is everything. Mm. And I'm not saying, you know, uh, guys, those guys get extravagant cars, but like just a simple BMW or a simple Polo that gets you from A to B. You're hustling, you still look good. It still looks, you know, you still look like a businessman, even though you, um, you so we all hustle differently. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not I'm encouraging hustlers to, to, to not own 
or to not be mobile. Yeah. I mean, it's because of, I work for companies that are my own, yeah. that, are, that own a lot of vehicles. Yeah. So when there's a time like now where I don't feel like owning a vehicle, mm. um, it's, it's, it's that time. Maybe, I don't know, maybe my next birthday, I might just decide, let me... You said something very important. You own your own company because when it comes to what you're saying about perception, different games have got different uniforms. Funuk Jalela, a PSL team, you can't come there with jeans. That's not how it's, it's played there. You have to wear uniforms. So if it's a black tie event and you're hustling, trying to make money, that's what you wear. If you're going to meet with farmers somewhere and they wear okaki or you're going to an, an Ankole auction, as an example, you dress the way they wear. And you're saying, or it sounds to me like you're saying you've transcended that because I've played the game I passed. Now it's almost, I'm not a PSL player. I'm the team owner now. The team owner can go to the field wearing shorts and slops because it's, it's his club. Are you saying it's something similar to that? Nobody ever arrives. Yeah. Nobody ever arrives. You decide to, you decide when to quit the game in your own term or in your own terms, or at your own terms. What's about the horse, Jean? Um, I wouldn't say that I've played the game and I've passed like I'm some guru, no. I'm just walking my own journey. Yeah. And the people that are guiding me that I can't touch right now, um, and the higher power, Unkulunkulu, make me feel comfortable to live the way I'm living right now, you know? And making the decisions that I'm making, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I've learned a lot in business. You know, I've been in a lot of meetings of tenders. I've been, a lot of, I've been in a lot of meetings. With, this is back in the day when I was still trying to get my, you know, get into tendering, you know? You're not in tenders now? No. Okay. But I encourage every entrepreneur at some point, you have to work with the government. Yeah. No matter how irritating it can get, sometimes they don't pay on time. Sometimes they take months or even a couple of years to pay you or they don't even pay you. It's irritating. You have to, we all have to work with the government because if we don't, who's supposed to? Who is, Who is all to? that money supposed to go to? Who yeah. is it supposed to go to? Because for all we know, it goes to the wrong people's hands and people who just splash it or don't do constructive, constructive things with it, mm -hmm. right? So my journey right now tells me, Wuti, um, I'm comfortable the way I am. I might change my mind tonight. I might change my mind tomorrow. Sure. I might change my mind even next week about how I look. I might change my mind. You know, anything can happen. Yeah. But, but right you're, now... But you're in control. I'm in control, and it's a beautiful thing. And you need to remember that I'm learning from a lot of very successful business people. And what I've learned is the most wealthiest or the most successful business people are a lot of them are very humble. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of rich people that are that you don't want to deal with, that are arrogant. Yeah. That are unbearable. I can't bear um arrogant people. I don't sure. You know, I'm intimidated, my energy I feel, you know. Because what it does, young because it wants it brings out that side of me to to try and and and, and humble you, especially now as you know, sure. you know, you don't have to treat people like that. But um, a lot of them that I'm associating with are very humble people. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing a lot with um what they would call the informal market, mm -hmm. the cash and carries, the whole the wholesalers. Those are the guys that are responsible for more fire, literally penetrating in every corner of this country. And I'm I'm always humbled to to that community and the way they do business. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they allow you to, to, to have food. They're always encouraging of you. No, eat, man, eat. You know, they, they, they serve you well. They look after you. Yeah. They're very informal in how they do their thing. They usually have got long beards. They're very um, um, real to who they are, what they represent. Mm. And a lot of them are very religious people. Mm. And a lot of them are very good people. Yes. A lot of them are very humble people. And, and then I've also had a very great opportunity to you know, um, to interact with very wealthy people from a different aspect yeah. of the community. I'm a khutmana ninyo ga botaki, I'm a khutmana botaki, you know? Sure. I've had a chance to mwana ni ingamla, uguti ingamla zi pila ganchan, lezes ninyo. Sure. You know, people who go for, people who go hunting, people who do. And then the more you get to learn, uguti, izi ntotine, nesitwa ba nguti zbalu legile. 
to a lot of people the insignificant things. Abantu, they're actually here on, in the world to build a future for their kids, mm. to build wealth for the next generations to come, not even just for their kids. Mm. They're literally building for the family tree in the next 100 to 200 years to come. And how they lead their lives is, is very different from how you would assume like a, wealth, a wealthy person lives. Yes, there are some people who live lavish lives who are wealthy, but then there's, there's others who are humble about it. But also you can never know... Um, you know, when when they switch into that lavish lifestyle that sure. you might not be exposed to when. Yeah. But um, but I think it's teaching me a lot. And Jobang Kula and Jobang Iba Umuntu, I understand my purpose. I understand why I'm working very hard to create this wealth. Mm -hmm. I understand the mission at hand. I understand the assignment, what I have to do in my community once the wealth does come. Um, and I understand my role here on earth. Do you believe you're going to be building until the day you die? Or is there like a cutoff? Is there a destination? Once more fire hits a billion dollars, I've done my bit, it's time for the next generation. Or once your daughter steps up, you're like, hey, now's the time because she's now ready. I know you believe in investing in our children as an example. You know, a lot of these people that I'm telling you about, and, and let me say a lot of them are from the Muslim community. You'll find that their kids, they're even in those meetings or they're working in those cash and carries, that, you know, from whether they're, eight years old or whether they're 14 or whether they're 17 or 28, yeah. you know? And um, they are humble enough to understand that what I'm doing here is is not my business. This is a family. They even call it a family business. They yeah. don't even say it's for their kids. They call it, I work for, they even say I work, I work for. I work for they the family. They don't say I own, yeah. I work for the family business, mm. you know? I, I'm working for my family. I work for, for, for this company. Those are the little things that I think um, majority of black people are not privileged enough yeah. to be in, in those types of environment, to be with, to be interacting with so many uh, business people. A lot of them who are wealthy, who are very successful. A lot of them who don't come from our community. So I think it's up to people like us to be able to um, share these types of information on, 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 on these platforms whenever we get a chance to. Whenever we don't get a chance to, it's up to us to lead our lives like we have learned something mm. by being in those environments so that we are leading lives that are teachable or that are, 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 um, are inspiring enough in a good way to mm. our upcoming generations. They might not know what inspires you to keep doing this, but as they keep growing, they ask themselves so many questions. And then they, as they keep poking holes or using your life or, or your work as a case study, then they're able to, to learn and understand, which, oh, this is what... Um, such and such was doing. Yeah. This is what he had to do. But such people who walk that journey, only their work only gets realized properly um, over a long period of time. As it happens while you are in it, you, you know, you might, you might never, it's not easy to, to realize or understand what they're doing. So um, I'm one of those people who are blessed enough to know where I'm going and to try as much as I can to apply the teachings that I'm learning from a lot of people and to humble myself and say I'm teachable. Times are evolving, times change. I'm no longer that kid that used to run around. I'm no longer that guy who used to go out partying all the time, speeding sports cars. I'm, I'm somebody's father now. A lot of millions of young people look at me as a role model. Mm. And um, I also have to apply the teachings that I'm experiencing. Mm. And I'm applying them my way. You probably could, could be applying them differently. But... Sure but I think it's a beautiful journey to be in. I want to ask again, you said you're building, is there a destination? I don't think anyone, any one of us is a winner until we all are. Yeah. And which, which I'm basic, I'm not saying that we're never going to be winners. I think there has to be people who break that generation, that, that, that um, generation, um, people who break that cycle. Let me put it like that. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't like using words like generational. Sure. Um, I we have you. to break that cycle. There has to be the Theos. There has to be the Tepos. There has to be the Rich Mnises. There has to be the Penuels. There has to be the... You don't have to agree with all these people. Mm. No matter how they trigger you as you watch their hustle, but they have to inspire you. With mm. These people literally stood up and decided, well, this is the journey I'm going to take. Even people like Abu Tlantlalax, sure. yourselves. Um, Abu Douglas Ngobeni, Abu... There's a lot of young people that are doing awesome things. And I'm not only talking about people that have built businesses, but you can tell, Luguti, there's just this explosion 
mm. of amazingness that has always been here in South Africa. It's just that now there's the growth of social media, more and more of it is getting more exposed. Mm. And then you need to remember us, we've inspired then younger guys who are then doing it even better than we did. And they've got the internet on their hands. That's sure. why they're creating magic on TikTok. They're creating magic on, on YouTube. They're creating magic using this, these internet things. We're getting a lot of young Forex traders. There are some of them who are legit, who are really literally making a lot of money, yeah. young as they are, yes. And there's some who are naughty, who then take advantage of other people. But it's a great time to be alive. And it's a great time to see people that have inspired over the years, being at their schools and, and helping out whichever way I can, become the best version of themselves, you know? And it's a great time that as much as I've lived and done all these things, I'm still young. You know, I'm mm. still young. You know, I'm still young. 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 Before you can sit in parliament, jeez. And, and, and not in a negative way. Yeah. You know, I'm still young. I'm still young. I'm still young. I'm like, um, that's what I would like to do for the rest of my life. Just keep on serving my country in whatever field that I'm in. Speaking about online, um, a gentleman that I admire very much, Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, believes in social media and the internet very much. Firstly, I want to ask, he speaks very much about focusing on what you're particularly good at and outsourcing the rest. And your thoughts around that because you are a hustler, you are a marketing guru. I want to know if you agree with focusing on what you're unique at and outsourcing the rest, or if you believe that uh, as a person, you must constantly be learning other things. And then the second thing now leads into what are your thoughts on the power of social media? Um... Thank you. I don't think I'm a marketing guru, but I do know that I'm gifted. We know that you're a marketing guru, so we don't need you to tell us. We can see it. I appreciate it. Sure. And I attribute it to the great marketing gurus like the likes of Abu Khurtman, Ibn Chingila, wherever he is. I want him to see this video. I want him to know because I told him in his eyes, Khurtman, you've given me the baton. You've come to speak here at Leadership 2020. You've, sh you, you've contributed your time, hours and hours, teaching our students giving them a marketing masterclass in person. Yeah. And you've also spoken at our seminars. And the one way that I can thank you is to go on to show you what the, um, the, the, your teachings are moving on to the next generation. And I'm going to make sure that I become the best in marketing in this country. And then I'll also pass it on to the younger guys. So when you speak about marketing, you're speaking about something that is very close to my heart. Shout out to Hepin Chingil. I met him when I was still at APSA, when, when he was running there. This was after he left Hurt Boys. Yeah, those sure. are giants. Those are marketing sure. gurus, guy. <laughs> You're definitely a marketing guru. You're up there. <laughs> Maybe not as finessed as their models, but yeah. you took it to the streets where it matters most. Yeah, I think it was important for us to do that. You know, I posted something the other day and I was like, um, I posted a picture of me and Blomenosis Kanyimbao holding a Mofire can at the Metro FM Awards. And that's the day, um, you know, I think that's the reason I got fired from the SABC for having done that because I got suspended a couple of weeks later, I got fired. And a lot of people did not approve of what I'd done. And I'm older now, I look back and I'm like, yo, you know, I was brave to do that. Just to explain quickly, the reason they let you go was because you were marketing without consent. Uh, it was an awards show. I was yeah. a Metro FM DJ. I was a SABC one presenter. So mm. I was a full on SABC employee from radio both radio and TV. Yeah. And working at Metro FM, I was invited to come and present an awards at the Metro FM Awards uh, in 2015. It was the 28th of February, I remember. And I just started my business with my business partner, Emo Fire. And the way the system is in South Africa, especially at that time in 2015, for you to get a 30 second sl uh, slot um, at any time, especially prime time, six to nine o'clock, you're going to pay exorbitant amounts of money. Yeah. Not let alone to go create that ad, how much money you're going to have to spend. Sure. Now it's better because there's digital marketing, there's social media. Back in the day, it was difficult. And, but besides that, I didn't come with a mindset of, mm. you know, I kind of felt everybody. It wasn't malicious. People go there to promote what they're wearing and they talk about all these international brands they're wearing and, and it's normal. Yeah. I think, I mean, how I incorporated it to my, to my speech, if you can go watch that video on YouTube, I did say, Guti, and I was at the prime of my music career at the time. That room was full of creatives and musicians. Mm. I was basically sending the message to the room to say to musicians, this talent that we have can change our lives so much so that we can invest in things like these. Sure. Basically, I was trying to send a message and saying, guys, let's go start our own things. Yeah. And remember at the time in 2015, it wasn't as 
normal it is it's it's becoming normalized now yeah. at the time it was, nobody was doing it so you know the resistance that i experienced and i got the whole crowd to scream more fire but obviously there was just that side of me that was like this might be a bit risky sure I'm, i might get into trouble for this the worst case scenario i'll get fired mm. if i get fired am i willing to um risk mm. my job both my job tv and radio mm. the biggest show in the country um you know for this startup and i decided yeah it was a gamble so it was a, a, a startup yeah it was a gamble yeah and i guess every entrepreneur gets faced with that um moment in their lives at some point mm. it might not be in in my way the way it happened in my life but even in your life it's it's the same thing there is that moment where you know now what you know what if i don't do th- if i don't if i don't make this move now i'm forever going to be here at metro trying to get a breakfast show trying to get an afternoon drive um other talent when it comes in i'm still you know i'm trying to until when you need to remember i already had a successful career bro like i, I already had like awards from yfm days i had music awards already i already had hosted ukozi fm breakfast mm-hmm. i had already gone back to yfm now initially I'd, i was hosting the afternoon drive i had gone back now to to host the morning show yeah and which got awards and while i was on ukoz we also got the best radio awards you know we, we even changed a lot of things at the sabc for a lot of people don't know young people who don't know at the time for pbs stations there were no technical producers there were no um copywriters or producers that assist the on air personality the on air mm. personality at the time they had to do everything themselves sure you guys essentially created I, jobs and created spaces for other people to build teams yeah and shout out to mlangwele and shout out to putlinda spear who was so humble he was the biggest dj on course at the time you know usually other people when when an energy or when a great, a great energy like yours comes into the room other people get intimidated but he embraced me he showed me love mm. and it was all love and he even said we can tell these people we can tell look, what do you want do you want the morning show i do the <laughs> afternoon or you take the afternoon i do the morning show that's how kind he Jeez, was he says beautiful. because i'm willing to go to the morning you can take my show now and then i was like uh, no let me let me take the morning and he was like cool if you had wanted my show you could take it i'd go to the morning that's I'm insane willing. he gave me so much love and for mm-hmm. it too and you need to remember that's the biggest radio station in the country it is second biggest in the world and yeah really so, yeah i didn't know that because the fm's the second biggest radio station on 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 earth yeah crazy after a radio station in china okay wow yeah because the fm has got over 7 million listeners i still get stopped and i still get um told about some shows that i did and this is years ago i even forgot sure so i came with all that experience bro you know so it's up to you do i still continue to do these morning shows on these big platforms and i just grow a career in mainstream radio Mm. and i just continue being that person because i could have a lot of people said you could have still done it differently you could have still remained in the system mm. you know you had a lot of air time there you were on prime tv prime radio how could you mess that up took a leap of faith you know and i had to take a leap of faith and in the early years it was painful mm. that's when i'm telling you would then you know the the coffers started drying out um the gig- your, your money was going into building Yeah, I I'd invested money into Mofire, but at yeah. the same time you need to remember the money that I'm 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 used to getting. Pel sure. I'm used to getting gigs every weekend, like four, five, six gigs every weekend. And your lifestyle has changed. You know, you need to remember where I'm living. Yeah. How many cars I have, the Come lifestyle on. that I'm living, Come bro. On. So to lose those checks, bro, and to lose that entire Ugluz more, any DJ will tell you. Yeah. Or anybody who's ever worked on radio or TV will tell you. Ugluz more especially on that level sure. to lose the SABC bro it was a big blow yeah. and it it comes with a lot of negative press at the time for me yeah. ushwashi is on my case i'm on the front page negative publicity week in week out sure what does it do to you? what does it, what does it do to the people who love you what does it do to your brand because you need to remember then we we rely on our brand you rely on endorsements you rely on having a good reputation and me now somebody who's always been working with the youth you know yeah. so njalo nangenzinto ezi snacks esha ngijabuli because ngicaba ngingosi zami you know sure lezi engizikhuthaza lapha nekela so it was it was a calculated move yes but um i don't want to stand there and sound like i'm because it worked out for me that you I'm encouraging it number one, or I am undermining the SABC in any way no sure. no you be, you believe in focusing on what you're good at let's say marketing yeah, yeah. as an example and outsourcing the rest or do you believe that 
a person needs to constantly, Elon Musk emphasizes all the time, I'm an engineer. I'm not a businessman, I'm an engineer. I pull stuff and then people come and pull businesses around it. Yeah, I think the greatest um, entrepreneur slash musicians that we've seen in our generation, that's what they've done. They say focus on the main thing. Yeah. That's what Black Coffee has done. But he was still able to build some incredible businesses around him, guess, I guess based on the team that he has yeah. and based on his ambitions that he has and just his greatness was able to open him up to open him up to some amazing opportunities. Some is invested on, on them, some is created them, some came his way, but he just focused on the music. Yeah. Um Serena Williams, um Roger Federer, LeBron um, James, LeBron James, yeah. Jay-Z, Kanye West, you know. Um there's an interview that Kanye West had with Sway mm. or with Charlemagne, I think it's the one with Charlemagne where he says the more I started focusing on my on my business on my on my fashion line on my sneakers my creativity suffered jeez and it's what happened to me but it was a conscious decision that now i'm going to be an entrepreneur i want to go build myself as a businessman i want to go continue i want to go now build big businesses yeah i want to do it and it's doable i remember i used to walk into meetings and people would used to just see a dj yeah. sometimes they'd even throw jokes like what is he doing here like it's just a dj sure. what does he know about business you know and I mean, I'm one of those people, the more you do that, that's what I need, actually, the more oompa oompa, you know, for me to prove myself. Yeah. But actually, I can do this. I can become a great business person. I've failed a lot of times before. Yes, I've lost money. I've made a lot of dumb mistakes, dumb decisions. But I think, I still think I've got it in me to succeed because every other thing that I've embarked on, I've succeeded. And every other radio station I've worked for, whether it was my TV shows, whether it was music, I've succeeded. There's nothing that's going to stop me. Even when I started my things with UTK TS Records, there was, it was not even social media. There was so much criticism that um, you have to be mentally strong to overcome and, and, and eventually succeed. So I wanted to become what I am now, what I'm becoming from then, you know? And I knew that you wouldn't, you're not going to be famous forever. You're not going to drop hits forever. You're not going to be relevant forever. So in some sort of way, break the cycle and, and build businesses. But what I've done even in that uh, journey I focused on what I'm good at. Yes, as much as I move from the music, my passion is DJing and music. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I love with all of my life. That's what opened all these doors. Yeah. And obviously being, being on the radio. For me, at least now, podcasting is therapy because it's sure. like radio, you know? But the DJing part, I still yearn for it. I, I kind of feel like I left the 10-year gap. I left the game. And I was at the top of my game. I was killing it. Yeah. Hit after hit after hit. Every album, every artist I worked with were topping charts. We did really well, you yeah. know? We made history. But um, when, when I decided to get into this, I focused more on, for lack of a better word, I'll be like the ambassador of the company. Yeah. Although I'll sit on the boards, I'll sit on the exco teams. I'll focus more on the marketing side of things. So sure. even at Mofi, I focus more on the marketing side, involved in the business. Uh, Leadership 2020, the same thing. Massive Metro, the same thing. And... I would, what you would call from a street hustler. I used to sell in the streets, but I mean, buy some Akaduin, bring buy some Marinke, and I'm a trainee. I still do that now. People are like, wow, you're so good at it. Like, sure. so how did you know this? Because I used to do it in the same time. Yeah. You know, I can do that. It's a skill, yeah. Paisa. And it's, you know, it's a, it's, a psycho, it's a psychological thing. But the skill that you're learning in the street by selling this 10 rand can is the same skill you need in the boardroom, bro. Mm. Because in the boardroom, you're negotiating for on your behalf. No matter how much the guy on the other side of the table likes you, but you're in a negotiating table, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to negotiate. So you have to come armed with those skills to be able to negotiate the best way you can for yourself as a business person. And that's what I've learned from the streets that I've been able to apply in, 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 in my business life. But I focused on what I'm good at, which is the marketing, which is the making noise, and which is being because the the... the 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 I'm popular, then I focus yeah. on my strengths. So that's my message to people: focus on your strengths and um, pl uh, protect your weakness, uh, for lack of a better word. But again, um, substitute your weaknesses by having partnerships or or, or a team of people yeah. who are good in that. Yeah. If you can't afford to pay that team of people who are good in that, then rather partner or collaborate with people who are gonna cover you there. 
Mm. That's why musicians have got managers, they've got a road manager, they've got a publicity, they've got a stylist, they've got, you know what I mean? And everybody, even billionaires, they've got like a team of people, that person who does this and that for them, that person, I've got a PA, I've got two PAs, mm. you know, I've got people who handle my schedule, I've got somebody who handles my bookings, I've got, it's a team, right? Mm. So I'm not good at that, I'm not good at admin, I'm not good at going through emails the whole day and just, you know, and it's things that you have to do, but I've got sure. my own time now, then I kill this. And then I'll go about my day and then I'll, you know, keep checking my emails the rest of the day. But I'm not good with admin, mm -hmm. sitting down, drawing up proposals. Sure. You know, but I'll go to the person who does who does it the best. And if it's things that we're going to, it's services that we're going to need on an ongoing basis, then this person then has to come into the team. Then we just do it in-house. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times I focus on my strengths, but then I'll make sure that I've got a good team around me. I, I love that you mentioned Kanye West because I think in that Charlemagne interview, he speaks about how people like boxing you, that I'm multidimensional. I'm not just a musician. Why can I also not be a designer? Why can I also not be something else? I've heard Bishop T.D. Jakes on a platform as well say, everyone is like, the bishop is now releasing these types of movies. He's writing these types of books. And he's like, yes, I'm a bishop. Yes, I'm a servant of, of Christ, but... I used to be a boy at some point and a boy that had dreams. And some of my dreams was to make movies, to write books, to host a talk show. Why can I not do that now? Are you going to contain me and prison me when God has given me so many talents? So I think for me, I'm, I'm inspired by your move and I'm hoping that it will inspire more people as well to be like, guys, you don't have to be multidimensional. You're not an animal in a cage in the zoo. Which if I made it on TV acting, now that must be my whole life. Do you have any other dreams as a kid? Do you want something else? Is there something you may be interested in? I think Brad Pitt is an architect, as an example. There's other people that are flying planes. I think uh, John Travolta has got a pilot's license. He can fly Boeings, as an example. Gary Vaynerchuk, for me, has been huge in social media. Before social media even blew up. Twitter, TikTok, he was saying, read comments, respond, engage with your clients. He runs, um, I think, a digital media company. How important do you think the internet is social media? And this is maybe the best time to start with the Hustlers Corner, which has got over 120,000 subscribers now. And, and thanks to your contribution. I think um, our meeting was never by mistake. Yeah. You know, I really think you're an incredible human being. And I think you've got a great future in, 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 in business. You've got a great future even in this media space. You've got a great future even in this online space. You know, you're intelligent, you're smart, you think on your feet, you're witty, and you're teachable, and you're humble enough to know that you are, you are at, a, at, a, at a stage where you, you're learning new things and you're evolving with this new world that we're in. And, and, and you apply things as, as you go, because I can see some of the things that we, we, we speak about together, you're applying them. And some of the things that I learned from you, I also apply. So, so I really love to see, uh, I love seeing your, your, your progress right in front of my eyes. Right. And Yabong Anam. You know, so for me it's just to say thank you for 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 the collaboration that we've had on 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 starting virtual mkuku. And and shout out to everybody that's been supporting us and people who are watching this platform who are chillers and squatters and hustlers, you know, we are all one community. Yeah. We all should coexist, we're not competing. Yeah. You know, we should be collaborating and working together. Um Without a quarter question, I was asking about your thoughts around social media, the impact of the internet and online oh, yeah, currently, sure. and I guess moving into the future. Yeah. And it's important for me to do what I've just done, guys. It's called affirming each other. You know, sometimes as a cool guys, we're taught to be hard. Like, in, in my not so, as he was, as he was, as he was, as he was, as he but you should affirm each other. Like, brother, I appreciate you. My sister, I appreciate you. I appreciate the work that you do for this company. Mm. Even if you're just cleaning here, we just want to let you know, sis, man, man, we appreciate you. Yeah. Your presence makes a difference in this place. You know? And we see you. Do you know what I mean? We see you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, giving a compliment to that lady who's serving you through a McDonald's drive through window. Mm. Sure. You never know. The other day I posted something, it was two weeks ago. I forgot what post it was, but I'll go screenshot it. And when this episode comes out, I'll probably post it on Facebook. I went on a live. Yeah, I went on a live. It was in the morning. It was last week, Monday. Sure. Yeah. Just, I think, the 28th or 29th of August, just before Inyangipel. Sure. And then I just wanted to encourage people. 
Like, I don't know, there was no reason why I was going live. I didn't even want to feel like it, but I was like, let me just do it. I went on for like 10 minutes. Somebody said, you've literally just saved my life. Mm. I was go I was committing suicide this morning with, with what you've just said, bro. I was, I was like shocked. I was like, yo, Kwanja sometimes it's not what for granted. Listen to seasons I want to, you know. Impilo zedu zi ibu si soka banya bantuan. So thank, the growth thank of... You, thank you for saving a life, by the way. And that's humbling, I, I know right? some people think that stuff is not real. As people that have expressed depression, it's real. It takes that one video that you're watching by accident and Usbu says, Tonayam, I know things are not going well, but put your head, keep your head up and let, let's, let's move. It literally saves lives and someone told you, you saved my life. Thank you for that. It's humbling, bro, eh? Yeah. Now that answers your next qu- the question that you had asked me, the impact of the internet. So if you're not going to be playing a role in this space, then forget it. That's why even Fired FM, even before Fired FM, Massive Metro. So since 2016, coming this way, I knew what, this is the direction to go. Sure. So Massive Metro, it didn't take off as you know one would have expected it to, or what we wanted it to become, or whatever it was at the time. And then just coming all the way this way. And then I remember there was a project. I went to stay in Cape Town. I've been staying in Cape Town the whole of 2021, by the way. Okay. And I was going to start a company called um, Wire Wire. And it was a fintech company that just had everything. Financial technology. Financial technology company where we're going to have young people employed from just um, the comfort of their couches at home. Mm -hmm. You just participate with your phone and you've got an opportunity to make a couple of thousands every day. By recommending people, by selling some of our products and we're putting together something amazing. It didn't happen, right? Or let me say it didn't happen at that time. And then um, Fired FM idea came, and then I moved from Cape Town, came back here to start working on Fired FM. This was the last the last half of 2021. So excited about it, uh, you know. I I we just we just set that world record, and I was like, and this is also still towards the end of lockdown. Fired FM didn't happen. FM didn't happen. And then and then now um, the Hustlers Corner. Why am I coming this direction and just in this online space? Is because that's the future. Yeah. If you're not starting an e-commerce business, or if you're not internet savvy right now, if you're not um, investigating or, or doing research around how you can make your current hustle easier by using the internet, then you're wasting your time. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be doing a, a whole lot of other things if it doesn't involve the internet moving forward. Jeez. You know, I, I wanna I want opportunities online and any other thing that the Hustlers Corner is going to become. Well, it's already an e-commerce business Mm -hmm. and I'm just seeing it evolve into becoming a podcast network, becoming even a bigger media player. And I just see myself also um, partnering with other people who are passionate about um, the fintech space, AI, um, you know, cryptocurrencies, the blockchain technology, um, you know, financial technology. I mean, if you look at the telcos, the likes of your Vodacoms, your MTNs and all these um, telecommunications companies, they're all becoming... uh, Banks, yeah, because now that they're offering true. loans. Now there's got uh, uh, facilities like Abu Voda Pay. Mm. There's Voda Shore. They have insurance products. Voda Land. Do yeah. you understand? So they're consolidating everything. Basically, what I was in Cape Town for to yeah. go start our own, right? So one has always been um, wanting to do the next thing, and but also just evolving with the world. I couldn't just be stuck in wanting to do things the old school way. We worked harder. But it's time now for youngsters to work smarter using the internet. They can just get rich with Wi-Fi and a laptop. If you can just ask your your, your parent to get you a laptop mm. and Wi-Fi. Worst case scenario, if they can't afford a wife a, a, a laptop, at least a smartphone. A mm. smartphone and the internet. Instead, would your your mother buys you other things that are extravagant? You'd rather tell them what it would. Yes, in my. Now I challenge the internet every month and kept like. That changes your life immediately. Jeez. So if you go to West Af- or East Africa, you go to Kenya, you go to Tanzania, you pay not even 20%, maybe less, maybe all the way less to about 10% of what we pay here per gig. If we're paying 100 rand per gig here in Tanzania, you're paying, you're paying an equivalent of about 10 rand. I've heard these stories about how our internet is the most expensive on the continent and arguably one of the most expensive in the world. And Utaj used to say data must fall. And I've said we need to pick up that fight. 
Imagine young people right now with access to the internet. It will unlock the economy. What's happening right now that you're seeing blow up is still nothing. This is only the beginning. Yeah. The potential that's there. Yeah. And you know how our youngsters are. You can already see what they're doing on TikTok. Sure. You know? Even some of them dance. Yes, that's their skill. They're yeah. creating a career out of it. They're yeah. becoming influencers. Some of them do skits. Some of them are comedians. Some of them literally became celebrities in front of our eyes just the yeah. past two, three years. They're now influencers. They're Thanks. getting paid thousands and thousands flying all over the country because they took a smartphone and they got Wi-Fi and they started hustling just using their phone. So yeah. there's a lot of ways on how we can advance our lives now if we work smart as opposed to wanting to think old school and go work hard you guys can make a lot of money working smarter and you guys can build e-commerce businesses. There's a lot of young people who've got like a, a lot of Shopify stores, online stores, they're selling their own drop shipping. People are doing drop shipping. People are doing print on demand services. People are doing affiliate marketing. People are on take a lot, Amazon FBA programs. People are on clickbank.com making money. People are writing company payoff lines and getting paid for it, watching ads or listening to music and getting paid for it. There's just so many ways of making money on a, online. That the, a lot of the people, comments are gonna go crazy here because people are gonna be like, Usbu must give us a whole list of all these things he's saying. Yeah, go follow by Pusher, be a pusher right now on this platform. Go mm. follow her right now on YouTube. Be a pusher or go check her out on TikTok. Go follow LA Chief, La Chief. Mm. Go follow. There's a lot of them, bro. Yeah. They're basically doing videos daily on how you can make money online. And I think it's just that mindset that makes us think, Boom. The whole world is right here. I built this brand here with this thing. Sure. I didn't do anything extraordinary. I think a lot of you guys have seen, I've made it look easy. Yeah. Basically selling a product for 10 Rand, somebody gives me 10 Rand. When they give me 10 Rand, I can see they've got 50 Rand. I convince them to buy more, take two. Sure. As a matter of fact, take three. And then they give you that money, you transact, you exchange the money of goods. And what do I do with that money afterwards? How do I double up? How do I invest this money to better my life? It's as simple as that. And sure. I've done it on the ground, right? I've done so many videos selling in the streets. And I don't, I don't know how many of you guys understood that I was teaching, doing that practically. And you don't have to do that. You just you don't need even this. need to do that. You don't have to do that. Jeez. You just you just need to go follow La Chief now, go follow Bapusha now, go follow any other, even Americans. There's a lot of, but I, I kind of feel I relate more to young South Africans that are showing online ways of, of, of making money because they're more relevant. Yeah. You know, sometimes Americans speak about things that ah oh, here at home, it does not allow us to, or maybe here at home, you know what I mean? So um, it's, it's a great time. And that's why I think internet is the future. It just keeps on evolving to the blockchain technology right now. I mean, I've sold almost 20 NFTs. I don't know any, anybody all over the world who sold almost 20 NFTs. Sure. Any black boy from Africa. I've done it. And with collaboration with, um, in collaboration with King Debs from Cape Town, one mm. of the most amazing audio, audio visual artists. We, we sold our NFTs through the OpenSea platform with no gas fees. The two NFTs, the one we, did ten, we released 10 pieces. The first one was called, um, was released with my Marua Pula single song. Mm. Um, and then we, we, we dropped the second NFT called uh, Moto, the Moto NFT. I released it with my Umoya single. Uh, I, I bought Bitcoin, made a bit of money of Bitcoin, got excited, bought some land, invested more into Bitcoin, excuse me, earlier this year, lost some money, market <laughs> crashed. <laughs> it's the name of the game, right? Sure. So, I play with these things, right? So I'm in real estate. How, how um, do you pivot li like the way you do? You do realize that's something unique about you. Because even old school, I'm a time that are billionaires. They struggle to pivot and you pivot. What's new? What's trending? Internet's young What's happening here? Music is doing what? I'm a piano. Are we podcasting? Are we doing online radio? Are we doing TV? What, what makes you pivot and evolve so quickly? People don't move. Yeah. Mm. People overthink their steps. People overanalyze their steps with all the intelligence that they have. What makes people like me greater, we even get to do even way better than people who are more qualified or more educated or more intelligent than us because we are doers. I'm a doer. I move, I act. I get things done and I fail forward. So as you get things done, you get to experience the practical way of doing things. And when you fail, it's actually a tangible example because you've done it, you've failed, you've lost money. It hurt you, it, it, it literally affected you. So not to touch again, you're like a kid. Sure. 
you know, as opposed to me telling you about this story, this story is shisa, I would not say zokshisa, zokshisa so and ilo wukzo and zagal. So people like me, we go out there and we, we get it done. And I kind of feel um, there's lots to do. There's lots to be achieved. Mm-hmm. There's lots of books to read. Um, we're living in a global world. I think a lot of people are still waiting to fly out of this country to go overseas. They're not aware that they're already global. Yeah. Including artists, musicians, everybody, podcasters. All of us were international. Yeah. You can speak to anyone you want. Last week, MacGyver was speaking to Damon Dash. Yeah. Who was, <laughs> you know Amer- I mean? was in America? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. The other day, I was speaking to um, to um, Patrick Bad David on DMs. The other day, I was speaking to um, Michael Saylor, who, who who is a cryptocurrency Bitcoin billionaire, basically from the US. And it's people that you think they're on the level of almost about Elon Musk. You can't speak to them. You reach out on DM, they respond, or they, they even reach out to you. It's like it depends. So sure. that's the world we're living in. So you're pre-COVID. Mm. You got this, bro. Game just changer. Adjust your mindset and start spending more and more of your time. Allocate your time with you. How much do I have at home? Do I have the internet? How many hours can I spend online? And which are the platforms that can change my life? Or think along with Glendale Avant to that I think are sharing educational content. Or let me start Googling. There's an answer for everything. Mm. Or even just being on YouTube. There's videos that you can watch that can teach you anything. How to purchase Bitcoin in, from South Africa. How to open, what is a cryptocurrency wallet? What is the metaverse? How to buy land on the metaverse? What is an NFT? How to mint my own NFT? How to create an NFT? How to start a podcast? What are the great, how to DJ? What are the, there's everything online. Yeah. You know, you can go to platforms like Abu. There's a lot of institutions also online that have got like tons and tons of content that you mm-hmm. can learn from. So without only reading things that are entertaining, you can then allocate your time to things that can make your life better. Yeah. And I mean, these are things I've just learned through COVID. Now I'm using affiliate marketing, I'm using Bitcoin, I'm using NFT, I'm using the internet now during COVID. Yeah. But it's things that I apply. So I guess that's why people like me get to go further because we don't just learn and sit back with the intelligence and sound smart. We take this intelligence and we go apply it. How do I make an NFT? I'm gonna go make it. Who's doing it? Oh, wow. The universe has, has made great job to make me meet King Debs. He does great NFTs. Oh, wow, let me check out his work. Wow, he does so much. Let me speak to him. Maybe he can collaborate with me. Teach me, bro. How do I? Oh, let's collaborate. Let's go 50-50. Okay, cool. You know what I mean? Like, let's do it. Sure. There is not this thing of, yeah, I'm going to have a meeting with him next week. He's out of the country for a week. No, no. Like, sure. mean, I mean, I DM you now. You respond. I'm back at you. Some, a lot of the episodes, I confirm myself. I reached out to Kanyimbao. You've been doing great. I haven't connected with you for a while, my sister. I just posted a picture of me when I was advertising more fire at the Metro FM Awards and I got fired. And I've not spoken to you in a while. So um, I'm reaching out to you to say, I've lo- I'd love to have you on my podcast. Sure. You were one of the people, Kanye, that started even podcasting back then before it was cool. She had a show that she was podcasting at the Orlando Stadium yeah. that she had invited me for at some point. She, even Nabu Makesh, they went and she was podcasting like this way before it's time. Yeah. I'm like, come to the podcast. She says, oh, you're so like, I'm actually in the country. I'm like, okay, when can you come? So when are you shooting? I'm shooting Thursdays, Fridays, or Saturday or Sunday. I'm cool. I'm available Thursday. Done. It's done. By the time this episode comes out, the Sis Kanyemba episode is in the back. Sure. And somebody out there can say, yeah, because when I spoke about was Abu Kanye. No, that's not what I'm saying. That's not the message. The message is this thing allows me to do that. Yeah. I don't have to say, no, I'm not around when I come back in two weeks. Like, Tina, oh. Get it done now, bro. <laughs> Again, for me, the, the YFM mafia becomes a beautiful South African story because it's like, but some of us were unknowns back then and we were willing to put in work and become the next brand. So if you're starting a podcast, you don't have to get a Kanyimbao. Who's the pumping girl in your neighborhood you can gain access to? Who's the kid in your neighborhood who's hustling? Those are going to become the DJ Spools of tomorrow and the, the Kanyimbaos of tomorrow. Start with them now and carry on building. Everyone thinks if they're starting a podcast, they must go for the most famous guy. No. When you have to start with the, the cool people around you and build. That's why high school kids have such huge followings on social media because everyone in the schools around knows them. So start there and interview the first team sports captain, the hottest chick around Dean, and then build from there. And then people start speaking about you. And then later on, obviously, the bigger guys will come. To, they'll probably be asking you, can we please come on? Yeah. yeah. And what I love about social media is it shows you and teaches you patience and consistency.
Yeah. A simple example is you. How many people knew you or how many of you guys knew Penuel uh, before COVID, 2018? Some of you guys, but not all of you, not, not as many of you guys do now, but you probably watch them right in front of your eyes, right online. How many of you guys knew Uncle Waffles before COVID in 2018? How many of you guys knew Bobby Cooper before 2018? How many of you guys knew Riz Malisa before COVID 2018? How many of, and these are ordinary people just now in 2017, <laughs> with dreams and saying, yeah. wow, one day. Little did they know it's happening just the following year. Yeah. Now they're traveling the world, right? Yeah. In just a short space of time. But what do they do? This. They Magic record their want. music, they post it on this. They do this and that, they shoot themselves videos, they post it on this. The hustle is here now. The internet is the future. For those business people that are on the highest level and you're looking for places to invest your money in, FinTech is the future. AI is the future. Look at young people that are starting incredible AI companies, young people that are starting incredible FinTech companies, opportunities that are in that space and invest your money there. Whatever amount of money I'm gonna be getting now is gonna be invested in this space, you know? Creating Crazy. more studios to, to shoot these podcasts, turn my thing, that's the media side of things. Continue contributing to massive growing, homegrown, radio growing that side while I'm pursuing other opportunities online. Also, because I'm also not, um, I still have that old school mentality in me of believing in real estate. Yeah. So no matter how much I can be on, on this internet thing, I'm not that phased to not want to, to not participate in real estate. Other people, they would rather choose to buy Bitcoin rather mm. than that, rather than owning a hundred properties. Other people are like, hundred properties come with a lot of headache, with sure. a lot of maintenance. Which is true. With a lot of, do you know what I mean? I yeah. can just rather buy Bitcoin. There's other people who would rather be brave and just all their money is on Bitcoin. Mm. But I kind of feel sometimes I think you need to have a diversified portfolio. Uh, so I'm building my real estate portfolio now. Why do you believe in local so much? Why do you believe in black so much? I think it's a struggle that um, we are all a part of. And I think in our own ways, we have to play a role in, in, in contributing to our community. And um, as I was telling you, man, I, I grew up around TK, you know, yeah. all of my 20s. TK Nguza. TK Nguza has always been yeah. conscious, you know. And everything that we did at TS Records, even if it looked like entertainment, behind the scenes, it was well thought out. And there was a lot of conscious elements into it. Yeah. If you take Mzega Zega, for instance, those are at, that are at varsity, take Mzega Zega as a case study. Go break Mzega Zega down as a case study and all the things that he did, all the way to Ama cell phones and Ama startup pack, Ama containers. Mm. That's a business case that you can break down and be like, wow, actually these guys were... Um, why was he like that? Why did he speak like that? Why did he wear overalls like that? You know? Um, why did he wear masks like two decades before the whole world did? Mm. You know, why did he wear overalls before the EFF did? You know, mm. and then you get to see what he, he's been on the right path. We've been on the right path because I was part of that team. You know, I've, I've been on the right, we've been on the right path to make him represent the working class, make him represent the hustlers, the builders, mm. the contract guys, the security guards, make him represent the ordinary South African with the way he spoke. And he showed you that it doesn't mean that if I don't speak good English, that I'm not dope at what I'm doing. And even what I'm doing, even if you can say I'm not dope at it, I can show you that I can still succeed in it. Yeah. And Mzagaza was not an artist, by the way. He was not a musician. Sure. But he won awards and he had five multi-platinum selling albums. Crazy. And he had a career in the entertainment industry for like, what, almost 10 years? Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. if you dissect that, uh, you make a case study out of it, you get to understand the black conscious elements that are into it. You go to the Cecil Leopa Education Foundation and the work we've done in high schools. I mean, we've visited over 900 schools doing different things in these schools from motivational talks to feeding scheme programs to bursaries that would give out, using my radio shows to challenge government to give out bursaries, taking kids to school. Sometimes, you know, even paying with our, with our own money from the depth of our own pocket. That's also part of just understanding our purpose and contributing, you know, and even all the way to 
the the radio station. I mean, shout outs to Zola. We did some great work at Massive Metro with Zola. Also, Stay NBC at uh, she was on air together. We did some great work with Candice Mudisel. I'm so proud of her. She's killing it now in the game. I'm so proud of Robot Boy. Mm. I'm so proud of my youngsters, Ria and Black Staff. I'm so proud of Abu Justice. Uh, I'm so proud of um, um, Celeste Ndouli. She's now global, doing her things overseas. Uh, I'm so proud of a lot of us, you know, and I'm so proud of Touch. I'm so proud of Gareth. And I'm so proud of all the things that I've done that failed. Mm. Vandal T-shirts had to fail for Mofaya to succeed. Mm. And shout outs to Trevor Zungu. And I saw that So It Quarter Festival. When I travel, I'm going to invite you for the So It Quarter Festival. I miss you, bro. By the way, I'm so proud of you. You're such a good father. Um, we had some great years, man. And it comes from that conscious element. And I think uh, a contribution is my mom's always screaming at me that I'm a blessing. You know, so I should follow my name to working with TK, who was our leader. Mm -hmm. As much as I was his partner, but I was more on the listening side. He, he guided the team. He led the team. I learned so much from him being on the a fly on that wall, him doing our deals, me just listening in, being talent and being his business partner. And every meeting he did, we did, I was just an ear. I was just listening, listening, mm -hmm. listening to how he negotiated for us, how he represented us. And I'm proud of the work and the lives that we changed and the impact that we made. And uh, it's also very important for me to say this, that when a lie is told over and over so many times, it ends up being believable. Yeah. Let them not fool you. We did great work with uh, the musicians that we did work with. We made history in this country. We changed their lives. They changed our lives. We all changed each other's lives greatly and positively. And it makes me joyful right now to even watch uh, Brown Dash's son working with my other youngster, who Robot Boy, um, DJ Lindash. They're doing great things together. He's, um, DJ, he's Robot Boy's official DJ. Mm. He's now making music. He's in studio. And he's just had a baby now. So now we are like grandfathers. <laughs> That's why I'm like, yo, if Brown was around, you know? Sure. Oh. Um, and there's another son of, of Brown that I, I haven't seen in a while, but I'm just so glad that I've also played a role in mentoring Brown's son mm -hmm. as a form of saying thank you for, for, for being a brother that we started TS Records together. Thank you for the years that we've spent together and the little that I can do even in your absence. You know, one will play a role in mentoring your son in making sure that he's in good hands and in making sure that he continues to be as responsible as he's been brought up. He was brought up well, very humble boy, extremely talented, amazingly humble. This is Brown's son, Ulinda, yeah. DJ Lindesh. And, and pro, you know, Nongkanyes is a trust, family trust. We gave the, the masters back to the family. Nobody does that. Nobody gives you your master's back. No one does. Nobody gives you your master's back. Yeah. This is a business. We do deals on the table. Right. And if I'm going to sit here and tell you the other day on our podcast, I told you, Guti, um, we went ahead and released Remember When It Rained, even when the whole year, almost nine months trying to get permission from um, Josh Groban's people. And shout outs to Mr. Leslie Sidibe, who was our lawyer at the time. And shout outs to Budvus Leo, you know, the gurus of the music industry in this country. They've changed so many lives and impacted so many careers. And Bud Leslie. CDB was one of the guys who helped us broker our first distribution deal with EMI back in the day with TK. People need to remember that I built a record company at 21 from the streets with TK, with TK Inglis, you know, so I, I come from that environment. I've been building things from scratch, you know, yeah. and I've never been somebody with, 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 with silver spoon. I've really had to go out there and make myself the man that I am. I've, I've had to go hustle for myself. And even with the mistakes that I've made, I've had to take responsibility. And I've had to humble myself and start from scratch again mm -hmm. and build myself. Nobody did me any favors. I did deals. I changed people's lives. I helped people. Yeah. And anybody that says otherwise, they're either ungrateful and I'm very disappointed that they are, but we forgive them because yeah. we don't help people for them to come back and say thank you. That's the work that we have to do. That's our responsibility as black people. I know I gave you a long answer, but yeah, that's my consciousness uh, in action um, historically from the work that I've done. But also moving forward, that's what I plan to do um, with the wealth that one is creating. I'm planning to do systematic programs, either structures from, from early development centers where we start these young people from early age. I know that my daughter is already successful because they say the first six years of a child's life are the most important years. Mm. Um, my daughter from age zero to age, now she's eight. I think we've done a great job with, with her grandmothers, with her mother and me uh, and her mother co-parenting, even though we're no longer together. I think we've done a great job. 
and um, our daughter is becoming something amazing. Mm -hmm. But I can see her become something amazing because both parents are present. They're there and we're starting them early. And if there's anything that can change this country is that family unit. It mm -hmm. all starts in the family. Right? We speak about our communities, we speak about our, our, our municipalities, we speak about our provinces, we speak about our country, but it starts within a family unit and we all are aware that the family unit is under attack, especially the black man. We've mm -hmm. always been under attack all the way till now. Uh, there's just different ways in how they keep remixing and keep on improving to keep on oppressing or attacking the black family unit. Mm -hmm. And understanding that, that's what I want to use my wealth to do. Um, you know, I want to do early development centers that already in involve kids into uh, online learning, online ways of making money from an early age, let the kids become entrepreneurial. Um, as the algorithms of these social media platforms feed us what we mostly consume. In countries like China, the Communist Party doesn't allow that. The, co the Communist Party in China drives or even forces or whoever owns TikTok or those algorithms to populate their society with positive things, mm. mathematical things, AI things, things that young people are learning, thing, you know what I mean? Like that's that's what is on the, the, the China TikTok, not that mm. I've lived in China, but I, I understand it from the research that one has been doing even since we've been locked down. But then you look at the type of social media we get, the rest of the world, right? And some of the people who even are, 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 are aware or they are woke enough to try and, and, and share or teach us information, they get censored mm -hmm. or their accounts get taken. So you can still see this attack from all angles. Yeah. And um, you can talk about anything, even from the pharmaceutical side, from the, you know, so systematically we are under attack. So yeah, so I wanna do things that, um, that, that build um, communities, that build kids, Ekasi, and the type of education that I would like to continue investing in, and, and I mean, I've been involved with all, a lot of, with a lot of educational activities over the years through SLEF. But now I, I, I want, if we are complaining about the state of education in the country, I don't think we should continue being part of the people that are only complaining. Yes, yeah. it's good. Let's complain and hold them to account. But let's be, um, let's be the doers. Let's be the solutions. And part of the wealth is going to go into that as well. And, and, and just in being a solution to that. And yeah, so I just want to um, die empty. I want to pour out everything into this world. And Live I think, full, die empty. Yeah, I think that's, that's the best way you can serve your people. And whether they're ungrateful or not, it's okay. And the other day, yeah, I'm bambi. No! <laughs> the other day I was with, uh, by the way, shout out to that episode. Joshua Maponga. Sure. Last week, Monday. Thank you. That was dope. Um, was it last week, Monday? Yeah, but anyway. First go, Monday of September. Of September, yeah. Go check it out, guys, on the Hustlers Corner podcast. Um, Penuel didn't answer me. Some of you guys know the question that I tried to get him to answer, but he was so slick this that is he, not my he interview. didn't answer it. This is not so my interview. So let him answer it on this interview. This is not my interview. <laughs> this is not my interview. Wow, my little what about Nyam? Sbusiso. Sbongano, ma'am. Um, thank you for being a blessing to all of us in the various ways that you've been a blessing. Through you, because a lot of kids do not track some of the people we track around the world, whether it's a Kanye West and Elon Musk and Aliko Dangote, Patrice Mutsipe, maybe a Jacob Zuma who's been attacked from various sides, certain entrepreneurs who had to develop a thick skin, the idea of uh, fall, failing forward, um, the idea of constantly reinventing yourself being teachable, regardless of how big your eyes are star. Some of your peers, you know, have become very arrogant. They're not teachable. They don't want to be told. You're still teachable. You're still willing to speak to a young kid at an equal level where there's mutual respect. I recognize your talent. Yes, I'm DJ Spoo, but I recognize you as well. Creating products that didn't exist into existence today that create jobs for so many other people. Writing books, documenting your story, literature, Creating platforms like Leadership 2020 for people to speak and learn from each other. SLEF and the charity work it's done. I know you, you told me that part of the reason you invested in More Fire is because you were tired of constantly begging for money and you're like, let's generate our own money so that it's easier to do charity work. And not only is it charity work, but you're creating jobs so people can make their own money and have dignity to feed their own families without handouts. For being conscious, black conscious, for going on a journey where you constantly have people asking many questions. Why are we hugging trees? Why is he growing his hair like that? Why is he taking such risks? 
there are many kids that even with the internet will never see a lot of the people that have inspired you, that have put you on, that you've partnered with. So you become the portal for them to learn from. And I think you've done an incredibly amazing job. Sensationally so. More than some of the biggest international stars we can speak about. In educating. In being a role model. In being an example. In putting kids on consistently. Regardless of if people have called you names and lied and bashed you in the past. You're like, I'll keep doing it. Because to what you're saying, it's not about gratitude. It's work I have to do. To being an amazing father. Showing, look, I did my best. The relationship did not work out. But it doesn't mean I don't... I'm, I'm no longer a, a, um, a, what's the word now? A present, a present father. Taking your child and being like, I have a business, my child will be involved. Taking other people and saying, I may not have given birth to you, and shout out to your stepfather as well, Ubabuli Ope. I may have not given birth to you, but you are son to me, and I have a responsibility to watch you shine and become something great. If it comes back to me, cool, it'll come back and I'll pass it on to the next kid. If not, it's fine. You're planting seeds constantly, constantly that seeds of trees that maybe you'll never get to enjoy. The NFT billionaires may not come now, they may come later. The fintech guys who end up dominating or colonizing China may not come now, they might come, we don't know. But you're constantly reinventing yourself and from my side as someone who you've allowed to be involved in your life on a much more personal level, because you work with many different partners, but you and I get to engage I get to meet your daughter. I get to meet your mom. I, I get to hear some of your stresses, some of your pains, some of your disappointments. And you've given me that privilege. And I'm hoping that the people that have given you the pattern, not just from business, not just from music, some of the people from politics that maybe don't even know that you exist because they died back in the day fighting for our freedoms. You still took the pattern that had fallen after they died and you ran with it. And I'm hoping that I can try in my way to pick up from you, well, at least you're still here, to take the pattern from you and, and to carry on running. You're still here running with myself and other people like me, men, women, black, white, Indian, etc. Thank you for running with us and, and showing us the way. And I hope that I can be a light in some way to other kids out there, not just to kids, to other old people that I know you've been trying to work on their minds. Maybe they've struggled. I know I'm trying to push more onto the non-black side, which is also my own fight to make because we have the same wish to create a better life for our families. Family is the cornerstone of society. Better families, better communities, better countries, better worlds so that we can win. And the more of us find each other and make a positive impact, we're fighting, like you said, systematically, we're fighting against algorithms that are destructive. A Twitter that wants you to bash someone so that you feel good about yourself. TikTok videos that are maybe toxic and not doing anything for you. But we're fighting. It's not an easy fight, but it's a necessary fight. And Minanj on my side, and I look and I appreciate you coming onto this platform. Um, I think you were meant to be the first episode, but I, I didn't want that because it was going to be like a, uh, for reactions because of Usbuda. I, I wanted to earn a bit of my juice, also make you a bit proud that I'm learning from you. I am teachable, I know when to say sorry. I know when to not say sorry and say, yeah, but this is now me. This is where I, I'm not now going to be a DJ Sbu uh, graduate and I'm going to show you in the same way now that some of your role models, there might be certain things like standing up on an awards show and be like, Ish, ain't on a flop. and it's like, no, but this was for me a, a religious moment where I had to take a leap of faith and maybe you won't see it now. But I needed to do this because these might be some of the things you guys are scared of. And it's always going to take someone young to do the things that maybe you were scared of at 21. To put on someone like Mzege Zege, who to this day, we still haven't had another insane star like that that is unknown. To this day. And that changed culture in so many different ways. Now you're doing business, you're doing the economy, we're trying to shift minds politically. We're trying to go into the metaverse, we're trying to go global. So from my side, I just want to say thank you very much. And uh, I'm not going to answer your question here. You and I have a lot of work to do on the Virtual Mkuku, on the Hustlers Corner, and on various other platforms, because I know together we're still going to put a lot of kids on, a lot of females on. YouTube, as it currently stands, you go to America, you come here, it's still 70%, 80% male. We need the woman to come on, because we've spoken about girl children being uplifted and the boy children being left behind. 
It can't be that we're decentralizing education on the internet and we're leaving our girls behind because they just want to watch twerking and makeup and clothing. Because if we're building strong men, we need the, the women to hold their hands because we're fighting a fight together. I'll answer you on the virtual cook when you can hold me to that and then we can have a, a lack of conversation. But for myself and for every other South African kid and African kid and international kid that you've inspired. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. I'm so proud of you. They say it takes young people to change the world. Yeah. We do know what happened in 1976. Mark Zuckerberg built a Facebook. Um, I built TS Records. I'm 43 years old today, benefiting off of a brand that I was brave enough to create in my early 20s. And that's the spirit of youth. That's where it comes in. And that's how important it is. That's why all you young people out there don't wait to be elected. Don't even raise your hand. Flip and go and grab the ball by its horn because it's your time. The internet is on your side. You are more than capable. You're great as you are. You are totally amazing. And we want to see you guys succeed. Let's make this thing happen. It's cut it. You see, I ends are lent. Thank you, son. I love you. show. We're out. Congratulations, by the way. Well yeah, done. It's the beginning. There's a lot of work to be done. We're building. Let's build, yeah. We're building.